Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Patra with me, Shail Patnagar, and this is Market Today, a show where we'll help you understand the closing air strategies on the day street. Mm -hmm. With us uh, will be top market experts to uh, help you understand how to navigate through these tough, volatile times on the day street. Well, right now, if we talk about the Nifty, it's uh, slipped below the 22,150 mark, 131 points lower in trade. It's been a very, very volatile trading session. Uh, the Nifty Bank has also uh, slipped further, about 300 points now down at 47,471 can be seen on this one as well. Broader markets have seen some bit of green and some bit of recovery in trade, especially the small caps that are now up by nearly a percent. So a smart recovery has really come back on that one. Mid caps are up just about one-tenth of a percent higher in trade. The Nifty Next 50 also just about one tenth up in trade right now. Among sectors, it's the oil, media space, FMCG, healthcare, consumer durables, some of the sectors that are holding up into the green. But the big drags coming in from the IT pack that continues to drag on the D Street, 1.5% lower uh, for this one uh, in trade. In fact, now it's slipped even further, 2.2% down in trade. So it's now slipped to the lowest point of the day. And uh, when we talk about the PSU banks, they, that continues to see profits being taken off as well, a percent now lower for the PSU banking index, realty, private banks, metals. These are the spaces that are down in the red. The top movers on the Nifty today are uh, Aisha Motors, DB's Laboratories, Titan, ONGC, HUL, HTFC Bank. Uh, some of the heavyweight counters that are supporting uh, the upside as far as uh, or limiting the downside, if I may say so, for the markets. The big drags, however, continue from the IT pack. Infosys now down by 3.3%, contributing the most as far as the nifty drop is concerned. Indusin Bank, LTI Mindtree and Wipro on the downside as far as the nifty is concerned. Share. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. With us is uh, Mr. Dheeraj Reli. He's the MD and CEO of uh, HDFC Securities. Let's do a sentiment check with uh, Dheeraj and find out what his views are. Uh, good afternoon to you, Dheeraj. And so far, we have a 700-point correction on the Nifty, as also a 1,700-point correction on the Bank Nifty. Is this enough, or is there more to go? Hi, Shah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, all of your viewers as well. I think uh, if we go by the trend in the Nifty, twice a year, Nifty do correct uh, 7 to 9 percent. To that extent, you know, these, this is that kind of a correction. Though we are in a uh, linear bull trend as of now, I will we see that the bull trend will continue. But if this is a uh, intermittent correction that was due because of the certain factors. And markets, when they are in bull run, they always look forward for some reasons to correct. And uh, whether it is geopolitical or you know, the, some of the recent uh, events that are panning out that can impact the market. So that's where we are. I think this is a uh, small correct phase of a correction, but the uh, trend is continuing to be on an upside only. Okay, so uh, this is a small correction so far. Uh, let's also uh, look at the other parts of the market uh, where we have um, a lot of strength, two stocks primarily, Excite Limited and, of course, ONGC. Uh, Mr. Elon Musk's visit uh, on April 20th to 21st in India, where he's supposed to meet uh, uh, Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, has enthused a lot of investors in the battery-making scenario. How are you looking at Excite? And uh, anything apart from Excite in the auto ancillary or the auto pack that interests you, Dheeraj? I think in the recent past, auto and auto ancillaries have been doing very well. This has got to do with the most structural trend on the premiumization and mass effluent customers getting more and more disposable income and the aspirations of Indians. So it has got to do with the larger trend rather than, you know, just uh, pertaining to a specific visit of an individual. I think that uh, Elon Musk visit is also a a, mo a momentous uh, occasion for India, but I don't see a direct correlation with the Excide or any particular stock. Yes, of course, this will open up an opportunity and it is inevitable that, uh, you know, the Tesla has to start some kind of activities and production in India and it's overdue for very long. India is emerging as one of the large markets for all uh, auto players and with the thrust government is having on the EV, 
uh, and some of the benefits that are available and Indians are also aspiring for a green, clean energy. I think there are more upside in the auto ancillaries and particularly uh, battery space. Very good afternoon to you, Dheeraj. Good to have you with us. Uh, of course, uh, since you said that, you know, um, this could be an intermediary correction and you're not sounding very worried with the kind of geopolitical risks that we are faced with as far as the markets are concerned. Are you looking at any pockets to be added in these kind of three days of a dip that we have seen? What have you really freshly added, uh, you know, for your clients? When we look at the uh, near-term trend, uh, we need to look at what is really... Uh, going on in the real term, uh, near term trend. So one thing is that we know that the elections are on the anvil and uh, already it is discounted that the existing government BJP and NDA will get the majority, but uh, to what extent uh, majority they'll get, will they get a thumping majority is not yet factored in. We have seen that monsoon is looking okay, uh, so not significant worries from that side also. Q4 earnings are also one thing which we need to keep in mind and particularly why because last year Q4 was a good quarter and FI23 Q4 was we have you seen 10 12 percent kind of a sales growth and 90 20 percent kind of a pad growth so we are having a and I'm talking about the nifty companies so we are working on a large you know larger base so that's where some kind of a you know uh, sentiment related uh, checks can come in because we are only hoping that we'll get only a 7% to 8% kind of a top line and bottom line growth on nifty companies on year-on-year on year basis of quarter four to quarter four. So that's where the some concern is there. I think geopolitical events are behind us, so I'm not un, unduly perturbed about that. Near term, I see opportunities still uh, in the mid-cap and small-cap space. I think we like uh, financials, we like auto, we like... Uh, discretionary space we like even industrial space as well so real estate is something is one we are clearly uh, are taking a note of it and uh, we are a little bit neutral on the it side and uh, metals and as well as oil and gas okay neutrals on it and it has been the biggest laggard as far as uh, the recent dip is concerned uh, we saw uh, you know good set of earnings come about from tcs uh, positive surprise on the deal wins margins front as well profitability as well um, uh, do you think the worst may be behind and now is perhaps a uh, lucrative time to uh, add some of these marquee names uh, even today infosys is the top uh, loser on the nifty uh, contributing the most uh, what is causing this drag in the it space and how would you really look at some of these large cap names i think the joker in the back here is inflation and interest rate trajectory what we are seeing is that uh, still large economy like us is growing well doing well and uh, rate cuts, what we were expecting in this year, may get tail-ended as well as postponed to the next year. So to that extent, I think the, it is the interest rate trajectory that is having an overweight on in the, uh, IT sector. So it, IT, uh, uh, unless until we get to see a clear trend where U.S. companies are investing more into technology and particularly BFSI a sector, then only we will see some respite for IT companies. As of now, the uh, TCS results were more to do with the margin improvement. They could able to keep the headcount on check, and they they did not give. Uh, in, in, they could able to manage the cost well. Also, of course, there were a couple of few deal wins were also there. But overall, IT sector, I think, uh, it's not out of the woods yet. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we'll do is now a detour into. Uh, the price action as far as markets are concerned. At 22.132, uh, the Nifty is uh, uh, down 141. Uh, if you look at the advanced decline ratio as far as uh, the Nifty is concerned, uh, we have uh, about uh, uh, 15 stocks in the green and about 35 in the red. So even now, uh, it's uh, bears that are ruling the roost as far as uh, uh, the bull market is concerned on uh, the Lal Street. At this level, 22.132, uh, it's the 34 uh, day exponential moving average uh, that is saving the blushes for the nifty it is below 20 da ema so the local trend on the daily basis has now shifted in favor of bears as far as the nifty is concerned with that background in mind 
let's look at how the index heavyweights are faring as far as the nifty is concerned amongst the 10 index heavyweights uh, uh, we have uh, uh, hdfc bank half a percent higher 1503 reliance is 6 rupees lower 2922 and infosys uh, uh, this is the stock to watch it is down three and a half percent at 1416 rupees the reason why infosys needs to be watched is uh, on thursday uh, the company will be declaring its fourth quarter earnings and it is an important index heavyweight to watch especially after tcs whose earnings were ahead of expectations but the stock itself is uh, now ruling 1.6 percent lower at 38.75 remember tcs started the fourth quarter calendar earnings as far as corporate india is concerned the other point of worry is the nifty it index look at the price in front of you 33608 this is the top loser as far as indices are concerned 2.5 percent lower and the index itself is approaching 200 day dma uh dheeraj is with, uh, here with us sir uh, you've already mentioned your view on tcs dheeraj uh, anything within the uh, mid cap it space or the large cap it space which is at least on your radar waiting for prices which may maybe improve further i think we'll have to take the q4 results with the pinch of salt as i mentioned earlier also last year q4 was a good uh, quarter so we are looking at a larger base to compare so that's where uh, we will have some issues but the you know the most important thing is to look at the uh, overall trend whether we will see more spend from the large companies in us and uh, europe and other countries i think that's where we are not yet seeing uh, a green signal and that's where we are still having an issue and margin pressures will also continue uh, the cost of employees cost of resources are going up one can play for one quarter two quarter on with the cost and manage that well but in the in the medium term to long term trend that managing the cost will be very difficult and also not to forget that the overhang of what will be the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning on various business models i think that uh, that is yet to be uh, seen and concluded that's where we are having some kind of a skepticism uh, about the it sector at large though some of the mid cap it companies may throw uh, opportunities to invest at the rock bottom levels when the valuation corrects valuations are reasonable even now also for most of the it companies but if we get the good valuation i think that will be a compelling proposition but we are yet i think one to two quarters away from that okay uh, infosys at the present moment at 1415 rupees is the lowest since 16th of november 2023 uh, we'll do a quick check on what volumes are buzzing in the market as also uh, the most active counters on the nsc 500 a surprising name here uh, while the name has been discussed uh, uh, much but it's the volume that takes the pick uh, 2630 crores worth of transactions have happened on xside industries nine percent higher 446 rupees ladies and gentlemen uh, this uh, uh, counter is up for the fifth day in a row uh, needless to say this is a record high so we will not be doing a technical check the charts look overstretch and of course it's uh, uh, running ahead of the event uh, all battery makers uh, with whether it's excite uh, whether it's uh, amara raja batteries both of them are doing very good as far as prices are concerned uh, excite is the top traded counter and you will not believe that uh, amara raja energy and mobility at 954 9% 9 higher is the second best gainer on the nsc 500 the first one being the uh, x side so very very hectic activity uh, being seen as far as uh, the entire auto ancillary space is concerned uh, i'll tell you some other stocks which are uh, doing pretty well in this space uh, we track 34 uh, auto ancillary stocks for you and uh, let's look at madhasan sumi uh, three three and a half percent higher 125.3 uh, uh, fm goats uh, three percent higher 371 stocks such as dynamatic technologies endurance technologies unom india all are up between two and a half three three and a half percent in trade today uh, dheeraj any preferences for uh, auto ancillary stocks apart from excite or amara raja batteries 
so we are positive on the entire auto and ancillary space just because of the good uh, medium to long term positive trend we have seen that the volumes have increased significantly and as well as we've seen the uh, preferences towards the suvs and uh, higher variants and and this has got to do with the structural trend so i, I think this as a sector at large uh, we believe that will continue to do well ancillaries will have to uh, really rechristen their business model to serve uh, some of the ev opportunities some of them have already uh, taken the steps and working on the same and they are already uh, uh, suppliers to the global players but uh, that's also one more uh, opportunity we believe that whenever we'll see more and more manufacturing shifting to india that's where they will get uh, more opportunities also so we are quite sanguine about the sector at large uh, won't be able to talk about the specific companies here okay uh, dheeraj i wanted to ask you um, have you tracked bharti hexacom uh from the time it uh, came out uh, did you come out with a paper on it a report on uh, this newly listed firm i'm asking you this because today uh, jeffrey's report came in with initiation of a buy report uh, target and a target price of 1080 that really shot up the price uh, to 13% high in trade today it's crossed the 900 mark as well now how would you le- really look at bharti hexacom uh, within the telecom basket going forward from here we like telecom as a sector at large because it's almost a duopoly now uh, and we believe that the arpos will go up here there's an opportunity for tariff going up and whatever capex related to uh, 5g is behind us post elections i think we will see increased in the uh, tariffs and that's where the opportunity is stock specific i'll not be able to talk this stock is not in our coverage so Uh, i'm sorry i will not be able to comment on this stock okay the other stock that i wanted to discuss is geo financial services uh, do tell me in case you have a coverage here can i ask you about as to what do you think is the future because this is now in the thick of action with blackrock um, you know jv now happening on the wealth management and on the brokerage house front uh, and the stock has definitely reacted to that is this a stock that you track no i don't think so we have a coverage on even geo financials as well but uh, financialization of saving as a theme is i think here to stay it is one of the decadal themes which we are seeing and this will have a rubbing impact on the wealth management brokerage uh, asset management life insurance and even uh, banking companies so hmm. my is that financialization of saving is a structural theme one has to track and be bullish on for next decade or so we strongly believe that from current estimated levels of indian gdp of 3.5 trillion uh, it will uh, go up to 7 trillion by 2030 and in this process along with this trend uh, with the financialization of savings and more and more preferences towards the capital market products i think this is a big opportunity we are yet having only about 4.2 crore unique in uh, uh, you know pan uh, holders investing into the mutual fund market after three decades or more than that existence of asset management companies so i see a big opportunity here uh, of course reliance geo is a a large player and blackrock has been uh, is the global leader and they have an expertise in the uh, almost all areas including the passive funds that will that's where they will do a market expansion Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's uh, again uh, detour the markets and look at how prices are moving. Uh, uh, because the overall market is flat, let's look at stocks uh, uh, which are hitting all-time highs. And uh, this is against the background of uh, uh, a distinctive bearish flavor on the Lal Street. Uh, Gas Authority of India, two zero five, about zero point seven percent higher. Hindustan Aeronautics. This is a list which is. Uh, Uh, often discussed especially at a time when the uh, background is weak okay hindustan aeronautics 3712 2.3% uh, higher cummins india 3117 uh, 2 and 1/2% higher uh, aisha motors uh, is uh, representing the two wheeler space uh, 4343 3% higher and of course uh, we've discussed uh, uh, excide industries uh, many times volume buzzers within nsc 500 I want to mark uh, uh, 
uh, a stock ONGC okay 282 uh, this is uh, almost a percent higher and uh, 3x the volume that we've seen in the past five days uh, at about seven and a half crore shares uh, the reason why I mark ONGC is twofold uh, one the government has increased the windfall tax uh, on uh, uh, crude oil by 41% to 9600 rupees a ton despite that we have a very very sharp uh, move coming in on ONGC the other stocks that uh, require our attention at least in the nifty 50 in terms of volume is the sell-off that's happening in mid cap IT and large cap IT LNT mind free 46 60 for you three and a half percent higher and uh, uh, about 11 and a half crores uh, 11 and a half lakh shares have been traded which are about 2.7 times the average Infosys again similar drop three and a half percent higher this is on fairly heavy volumes uh, Aisha Motors run with heavy volumes on the long side Hindustan Unilever in the green a percent higher 22 17 uh, remember uh, a good monsoon prediction by the IMD is beneficial for FMCG companies and that's why you see a very nice green tick on some of the FMCG counters in trade today uh, coming to you Dheeraj, anything uh, that catches your fancy in FMCG, they've been beaten black and blue, absolutely zero interest, so this is going to be a contrarian bet, if at all. Yeah, if you really look at the FMCG sector in the last few years, it's been striving only on premiumization and, uh, and not being able to see uh, good uh, volume growth. I think that premiumization uh, theme will continue and that's where from they will get the margins but again unless until we see the rural spend picking up and volume increase happening there will not be a, a structural upside or opportunity here in the FMCG space of course stock specific opportunities will keep coming uh, depending upon the valuation and the business model and the opportunities in the niche spaces or acquisitions they do uh, but my take is that FNCG is one sector which is priced to the perfection. This, uh, you know, tactical news about monsoon can help you uh, to some extent to get, you know, uh, some upside uh, in the near term. But in if you look at in a long term or mid term uh, trend, I think the they are valued to the perfection. So we don't see a significant upside in most of the uh, companies and sector at large. Okay. Uh, Dheeraj, you did say that, you know, selectively you are positive on the mid and the small cap space uh, despite, uh, you know, concerns that were brought in a recent in the recent while of froth uh, developing, of overheating in this space as well. And the space has always seen, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, buying on dips emerge. Even today, small caps uh, is the one, um, uh, the index is up by 0.6 percent odd. So the first one to recover after a dip is usually the broader markets, then they are not letting go of the kind of move that they have uh, had. Where exactly would you be buying in the mid and the small cap space? Any sectors, stocks that you can mention? I think uh, if you look at it, when SEBI uh, raised a red flag in the some mid cap and small cap space and then asset management companies also stopped or moderated the inflows, we've seen that some kind of a froth has been taken out from the mid cap and small cap and we've seen a decent correction in uh, small cap and mid cap space but uh, our take is that the froth is over i think there are opportunities in fact uh, i was looking at the even mutual mutual fund flows also first time in last 10 months we've seen 94 crore kind of outflows in the uh, mid cap and small cap space uh, in the mutual funds also, but that's very nominal number. The structural trend is continuing. If you look at India at large, there are more discussions at the retail and HNI level about the mid cap and small cap. I think I've mentioned already, there are opportunities on the uh, auto ancillary side. There are open opportunities on uh, energy transition side. Also, we see there are opportunities in the uh, NBFC side also. So the, it is, there's a plethora of opportunities in the mid cap and small cap space. Unfortunately, I will not be able to talk stock specific, but uh, we can do a separate session with the analyst who will give you the uh, recommendations on the stock side. But sure. structurally, we are really uh, 
uh, we believe that uh, you know the froth is over in the mid cap and small cap space at large okay okay what about the pharma space tiraj uh, what is your view here uh, we have been seeing a lot of developments come in uh, and uh, of course with it whether it is with diagnostic chains uh, some of these companies have been showing us promise in the stock prices how are you looking at this entire basket and where would you tilt in case you would want to buy this dip so diagnostic is an interesting space again it is somewhere to do with the discretionary spend and affordability and as well as uh, awareness on the health uh, side and preventive health checks and so on so that's an interesting space hospitals are priced to perfection so uh, limited opportunities there i think uh, pharma for q4 to uh, year on year basis will have a better results uh, we will see a good results al along with the dfsi uh in pharma sector also we are expecting a better results for the q4 so that will pose some technical opportunity and some technical uh, upside in the short term uh in the medium term i think uh, you know uh, uh, we believe the diagnostic sector is a better proxy to the healthcare than looking at the hospitals okay ladies and gentlemen uh, i'd like to mark uh, patanjali foods Uh, for two reasons one it's just uh, uh, moved up very very sharply 1413 for you and uh, it's up about uh, 5.8% my assumption is that uh, uh, it's the uh, it's the good monsoon prediction that's uh, boosting a lot of fmcg stocks today more so patanjali uh, because it's moved uh, dramatically higher from its 200 day uh, moving average we'll do a chart check on this uh, fairly shortly but uh, Uh, this is the most active stock that i saw uh, immediately and what's really interesting is that if you see the all time high on this one uh, it's uh, the most recent high uh, after the company changed hands uh, is uh, let's just uh, give you a good number is about 1698 so that's the move that's coming in uh, apart from that i think uh, uh, given the last half an hour is there upon us uh, Uh, there is uh, you know the end of account settlement happening on the bank nifty uh, at 47430 it's down 340% uh, 340 points uh, it's the it index which is really really taking it on the chin now below 200 dma 33550 for you ladies and gentlemen 921 points lower so there is some uh, how should i say hectic activity on infosys uh, ahead of the earnings uh, where a lot of positions uh, often uh, are built up remember infosys has this dubious distinction of opening 10% gap up or gap down depending upon how the earnings are in the previous 27 quarters uh, we don't know uh, how this will work out but uh, for the moment uh, there is hectic short positioning happening on it stocks uh, chiefly infosys and that's visible in the way the it index is moving uh, anything that catches my fancy yes uh, hdfc bank ladies and gentlemen uh, it's being used to balance out the nifty the fall of infosys has been uh, timed with perfection to see the highest point in hdfc bank which is 1507 remember the day's low was 1482 so 18 plus 7 uh, this is a 25 rupee up move that we have seen and the nifty continues to bleed 150 points lower 22 123 sakshi what have you seen uh, well shell i think you were mentioning patanjali foods and uh, there is one news uh, that gqg has raised its stake Uh, from 3.3 percent in the January to March quarter to 11.5 okay. percent, and uh, that could be the trigger uh, behind the kind of move that we have seen on Patanjali. Well, um, uh, you know, just last word from you, Dheeraj. I'd like to take as far as uh, the earning season is concerned. Where do you see outperformance coming in from Q4? Which is the sector that you are most bullish on, and where do you see underperformance stemming as far as Q4 is concerned? So we believe the pharma, uh, auto, and uh, Uh, BFSI should do very well in the Q4, and that would reflect in the annual performance also. And uh, we are underweight on the earnings growth in oil and gas and metal space. So that's where we have a concern. 
and we believe that there could be some challenge. We've seen that the volume growth is coming out well in the auto space. We've seen the margin expansion to some extent happening in the uh, BFSI space as well, and as well as uh, the story of uh, private sector capex uh, is playing out well. Uh, credit growth is supportive, and overall, you know, the high costs of operations are behind BFSI space. So that's where we see opportunity. We are not so up, uh, you know, bullish on the metals and oil and gas space. Right. Well, uh, truly appreciate your time with us, Neeraj. Thank you so much for speaking to us on business today. And here's hoping you have a fantastic time till the time we get you back on our channel. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, meanwhile, viewers, we now have uh, Vaishali Parikh now joining in, uh, the Vice President of Technical Research at Prabhudas Leeladhar joining in. Vaishali, good afternoon to you. Good to have you with us. Uh, do tell us, how are you looking at the markets? Uh, with your coming back on the screen, are we going to be looking at a reversal in the markets very soon? I really hope so too. Good afternoon. Yes, so market, we have seen a good corrective move and uh, for now I think 22,100 should hold on. If we see a break of these levels, well that would be calling for a further good erosion coming in. So for now I think 22,100 should hold on for today. Okay. Good afternoon to you Vaishali and as usual you are our lady luck. And we are desperately hoping that, uh, you know, a 700-point correction on the Nifty and 1,700-point correction on the Bank Nifty is uh, more than enough for Nifty bears. And we'll see a nice reversal, reversal happening. As it is, uh, you know, it's Ashtmi today and Nomi tomorrow. So all the good uh, divine powers of the mother are working in favor of uh, uh, the Nifty bulls. Tell us two stocks that look good to you on the chart. Well, for now, for now, I like um, HDFC Bank because uh, that is, uh, I think, pretty much done with its corrective move. So I'm quite bullish on HDFC Bank from here on. Uh, well, it is also technically, if we see, it is in the process of making higher volume. The worst is over. Looks it clearly looks like that. So 1480 acts as a support, and I think, well, if market gives a good bounce, we would relook at the targets of 1560 for now. And the other stock, which uh, looks pretty good, of course, I mean, ONGC, which is on everyone's radar, it's doing quite well. So ONGC with a support of 260, I would look at a target of 310. Okay. Uh, ONGC is something that I wanted to discuss with you as well. Uh, a breakout in price, a breakout in volume, a record high, and this is against uh, uh, negative news that has come in. So it shows the inherent strength uh, uh, that uh, uh, buyers today especially are showing as also, uh, you know, it's one of the most active counters, the second most active counter on uh, uh, the National Stock Exchange today, 2182 crores worth of transactions happening. Uh, Vaishali, what are charts of Infosys telling you? We are a day away, two days away from the earnings, tomorrow is a holiday, uh, very heavy selling coming in. What do you think is happening? So I would say actually speaking, I think you know 1400 level is acts as a good support level. So it should theoretically, I mean of course we don't play results but uh, 1400 should take a pause. But if this level breaks further, I think it would relook at, I mean we would have a target of 1350. So it's a quite a, a dangerous situation right now but 14, technically speaking, I think it's pretty much done with its corrective move. Okay. I'll ask you about the performers. Um, you know, Exide, 40% uh, in the last few days is the kind of surge that we've seen on Exide already. How would you really look at this one? Is there more charge left on this battery maker? So I would say, well, of course, it's already in the new price territory. Even if you see the monthly chart, it's showing strength. I mean, but I would say be cautiously positive because if this continues, 480 cannot be ruled out. 480 cannot be ruled out on Excite, still steam left. And we've also got a brokerage house report today with a target price of 485. That's Nomura on Excite. That's uh, given a buy call on the stock. Uh, and therefore, we see a move on this one continuously. The other one is the top mover on the Nifty today, and that is uh, Aisha Motors. It's now at a record high level. It's touched a record high today, 4404. Uh, that's the new level that we've got of Aisha Motors today. Um, where do you think the stock is headed? It did come off that high point uh, a little, but it's holding on to 3% up move. So I think uh, Aisha Motor is uh, going against the trend of the market. So once again, very strong stock. 
I can continue holding this can do 4500 in time uh, as a near term, but 4800 also is the projected target. Okay, 307, ladies and gentlemen, we are now uh, 23 minutes away from calling it a day on uh, uh, Tuesday. As also remember, tomorrow is a holiday. Uh, so far, it's been a spike free expiry as far as both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty are concerned. Absolutely quiet. Uh, uh, I'll also get your attention on another stock, uh, uh, Vaishali. It's Markson's Pharma. Uh, this is a uh, this is a mid cap pharma space uh, stock where Massachusetts Institute of Technology purchased 60 lakhs, 66 lakh shares yesterday. What are the charts telling you? Today it's uh, almost 14 percent higher. Yes, it's. I think it's ready for a breakout because since two days we are seeing exceptionally high volume. Uh, 179, 180 acts as the resistance. And if we move past, seeing the volume is quite lightly, I think this is ready for a target of 200. So it's a positive bias right now. Okay, uh, that's something interesting. And uh, uh, as I had mentioned, we have uh, uh, Vaishali with us and Lady Luck has started to smile. HDFC Bank, day is high, 1510. Uh, we still have about 20, 25 minutes of trade left. Uh, Excite uh, batteries now 10% higher in futures, 446. Uh, Vaishali, would you stick your neck out on Excite or enough is enough? I think not a, it's, it would be quite bold to buy right now, but just uh, those who are holding it should hold, continue. Okay. Okay. Sakshi, what else have you watched? Well, apart from this, it's, uh, uh, you know, Devious Laboratories is something that I wanted to discuss with you, uh, Vaishali. Diagnostic stocks have been constantly moving. Is this a stock that you're tracking? Is this something that will continue to give us more move? I would think so because Devious has really not participated. If you see the uh, daily chart as well as the weekly mm. chart, there has been a very long consolidation. And now we are seeing that, well, a very short uh, consolidation, what we have seen in the recent past. And it looks uh, positive for a new round of momentum. So I would say, well, 3600 acts as a good support. Once we see this stock moving about 3830 level, it's ready for 4000. So my view is positive. Uh, chart also looks quite good chart also looks quite good as of now. Uh, a whole host of stocks moving as far as the uh, broader markets are also concerned. Let me uh, just talk about a few of them. Uh, Dynacon Systems, that's up 20% in trade after the news flow today. We saw uh, Vatek Wabag is something that's moving in trade. It's up 15.4% higher. Uh, Hindustan Motors is up in trade about 18%, about 19% uh, higher in trade right now. Uh, we have Bharti Hexacom that's a, of course moving up very, very strongly 12% higher in trade. Uh, then apart from this, we also have stocks like uh, uh, Amara Raja in energy and mobility. So that's again up in trade from the battery space. Uh, we also have stocks uh, uh, like... Um, all right, uh, that's about it, I think. Uh, those are the kind of buzzing space stocks that I'd like to highlight. Uh, but Watek Wabak, is that a stock that you track, Vaishali? 14% uh, higher in trade today. Is this showing you some strength? Yes, uh, Watek Wabak and also Iron Exchange. So, of course, right now, as we are seeing, Watek Wabak is uh, showing a lot of strength. And this is one st uh, stock which one must have in a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's doing very well and it's already in the new hype. So, continue holding. Let's look at uh, some other parts of the market uh, which are now buzzing. Uh, Vaishali, we'll take a view from you on Patanjali Foods. Uh, uh, news just coming in. Uh, GQG Partners has raised its uh, stake from 3% to 11%. Market capitalization is somewhere like 48,700 crores. So, 11% would make it somewhere in the vicinity of 4,900 crores. Moving from 200 DMA, what are the charts on Patanjali telling you? Yes, so it is uh, showing some signs of uh, revival. Above, uh, let it cross 1430 because that's what the resistance uh, level what we are witnessing right now. If we sustain above 1430, it's ready for uh, 1550 to 1600. Okay, uh, I think we have a spike in the market. This is all expiry related, nothing at all. Uh, just premium being sucked away. 22,154 for you. Remember the index 
low today was 22,080. And in the last 10 odd minutes, uh, the index has moved about 40 points higher. We still have uh, uh, about 20, uh, we have about 18 minutes left. Uh, let's look at what uh, the bank nifty is doing as also the fin nifty both of them have very strong moves coming in bank nifty has moved from 47400 to 47485 we're just marking spikes not uh, looking at any kind of trade but uh, uh, these are spikes that are related to end of account settlements and uh, bank nifty is uh, most likely uh, not going to pass 47500 fairly heavy uh, resistance there despite the fact that uh, 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 HDFC bank is moving very hard is what nifty is trying to do negotiate 22 150 this is a major major resistance on the second uh, support that we've seen since morning uh, Vishali any view that you would have on the nifty over the next 10 12 minutes I think uh, there is scope for upside because now I'm seeing reliance participating so I think uh, this can in all likelihood go towards 22, 200 levels. Okay. Okay. So another 50 point uptick is what you're looking at. Yes, it's broken. 22, 160 and uh, uh, 47, 502 uh, on the bank. Nifty two major resistances have been uh, broken uh, by the bulls. Let us see how it moves. But these are absolutely expiry day moves. Uh, and the less traded, the better. Sakshi. All right. Some railway stocks coming back in flavor, like Titagar Rail. It's up six, six and a half percent right now. Um, of course, along with it, RVNL is moving a bit as well. IRFC. These are some of the stocks that are moving up. Uh, on Titagar Rail, would you have a view, um, Vaishali? Yes, it would be a buy because if you see the chart, I mean, right from uh, 1100 odd levels, we have seen the stock retracing and now uh, taking a support a number of times. Three times we've seen this taking support at uh, 200 day moving average. So I would say 850 acts as a very prominent support. And today's candle, today's volume also looks very promising. I think uh, risk reward ratio is favorable with today's lowest stop loss. You can go for a target of uh, 1100 to start with. Okay. Uh, so that's as far as Titagar Rail is concerned. Apart from railways, it's the shipbuilder stocks that are again on the move. Cochin Shipyard up 4% uh, in trade. Uh, that's at 1,099 right now. Uh, Garden Reach Shipbuilders is up about 3% odd in trade. Mazagon Dock is also up about 2.5% up in trade. The entire space is in the thick of action again. Uh, what's looking good to you um, in the shipbuilder space, Saveshali? So I think I uh, like all these stocks for a long-term perspective. That is Cochin Shipyard, even Mazgao Dock, because the trend is very intact. And I think there is scope of uh, good upside from here on. So these are the stocks which are already recommended and we continue to stay positive. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's do, uh, let's just track an option for you for the next 14, 15 minutes. Uh, 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 Vaishali is with us. This is just, uh, how should I say, uh, uh, a bookish exercise. We'll show you uh, the Nifty 22,200 option expiring in next week, April 25. And this is a call option at about, uh, uh, <coughs> I think, 174. We'll keep an eye on this one in the last uh, four or five minutes. It's moved from uh, a low of 150 to about 174. Let's see uh, how it spikes. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's there in front of us. Uh, 176.25. Just keep it uh, on your radar, and we'll see what happens in the next uh, uh, four or five minutes. Uh, if Nifty indeed goes up to 22, 200, still 40 points higher, you'll see a nice uptick on uh, this one. And... Uh, it is of the next weekly expiry, uh, therefore, it still has a lot of time value left. Uh, what else is uh, buzzing in the market? Sakshi is marked Cochin Shipyard 5% higher. What else can I mark? You know, it's there's some stocks that are up 9-7%. I don't want to mark them on air because, uh, you know, the quality is a bit suspect. Uh, let me just do something really different for you. Uh, let's look at buyers only in NSC 100, if at all, okay? 
this is a bit difficult to mark. I am sure it's uh, going to be a little difficult. Okay, we can show. Uh, let's let's just avoid this. This is a bit dangerous, and uh, uh, there aren't any great names that I can think of, uh, except for Lokesh Machines, 472, 10 percent higher. Uh, this is a company that's recently won an order on the defense space. Uh, nothing much. We'll 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 avoid it completely. Sakshi, anything that you've got? Um, a lot of stocks that have hit 52-week uh, highs today, apart from the battery makers, AG's Logistics uh, up about 7.9%. That's hit a 52-week high. Dom's Industries, remember this was recently listed company. That's uh, hit uh, again on 52-week uh, high, 4% higher in trade. Uh, you have uh, Phoenix Mills. That's passing in trade, 3.9% higher. Uh, again, it hit uh, a 52-week high level of 3176. Godabri Power, uh, that hit a 52-week high of 859. Uh, these are some of the stocks that are passing. Anything in this list of stocks uh, that you like, uh, Vaishali, that have hit a 52-week high today? No, I'm sorry, I'm not tracking these. But Aegis Logistics, yes, that is one yeah. to our liking. And yes, uh, we continue to stay bullish because uh, overall, we are seeing that uh, there is still a lot of ups uh, upside because even the indicators are not showing any exhaustion. So I think continue holding 560, 580 can be the next target. Okay. Let me ask you on uh, Titan now, um, Vaishali. Uh, the stock is buzzing again 1.3% higher and we all know how gold prices are surging like how. Um, are you going uh, to your uh, jewelry store to buy uh, your next jewelry or are you looking at buying the stocks instead how are you playing the gold theme well i would uh, definitely consider now uh, gold and silver because uh, we have been tracking the stock and both had given a breakout quite some time back so now the project and with the geopolitical uh, uncertainty these stocks i mean uh, gold and silver they look quite promising so one should start uh, considering these commodities All right. Uh, One stock I'm so liking right now is Dr. Reddy. Dr. Reddy's. Yes. So we've seen it uh, showing good momentum right now, volume picking up, and uh, support is 5950. Stock is uh, showing strength. So let's see. This is one stock which I do like. And what about Apollo Hospitals? I, Apollo Hospital, technically well placed, good level to uh, start accumulating. Okay, what we'll do, ladies and gentlemen, we'll provide you with some news. Uh, there's absolutely nothing happening in the market uh, uh, except for Excite Industries. Well, uh, again, a blowout, 464 for you. Remember, just uh, two or three minutes ago, uh, this was at 449. So, okay, something exciting happening in the dying minutes of trade. Uh, in the cash markets, we've just seen a transaction happening at uh, uh, 464 rupees and a very big one at that, actually. Uh, Six lakh twenty-eight thousand shares have been traded at twenty-nine crore rupees. So this is something to be watched out for. And I was just pointing out Kiloskar Ferris. Uh, the companies has informed the exchanges that one of its mini blast furnaces at Karnataka, uh, Hiriupur plant, has resumed with effect of April fifteenth. Uh, uh, this is news that's just coming in. A block deal happening on Geo Finance as well. The counter is 2% uh, higher, 361.75. Today's trading volume is uh, 1700 crore rupees and a blowout happening on Senko Gold. Remember, the earnings were there on uh, uh, Monday. Uh, the stock uh, shot up rapidly and it's now up another 11%, 1016. Needless to say, uh, this is uh, another record high as far as prices are concerned. And uh, these are the two stocks at least uh, that are there in news. A lot of deals happening again on uh, Excite Industries, now 14% higher, 466.65. No let up here, Sakshi. 467.40. More transactions on the way. Absolutely. So, uh, would you want to revisit your target now, Vaishali, on Excite? You did say 470, I believe, right? I maintain 480. 
you maintain 480 okay got that uh, so that's as far as excite is concerned some burden mother son is also on the move uh, apart from excite so this entire um, uh, you know space of auto ancillary in the bus uh, there was a time when it was constantly up and about every day this uh, stock was showing an up move it lied low for a bit uh, do you think it will again uh, chart its uh, territory on the uptrend you're talking about Samarthan? Yes. Yes, so I think this stock is quite a uh, underperformer comparatively. But still, if you see uh, the weekly chart and all, there is scope and it is showing a lot of strength chartically, making higher bottom, higher, uh, higher top formation. And right now, also, if it sustains above 130 levels, I think it would be ready for a target of around 150, 160. Okay, so that's as far as Sambarthan is concerned. 323, uh, Vaishali, uh, do tell us your top uh, BTST, STBT calls, even though there will be a break uh, in between. Uh, what should one be really uh, keeping in mind for Thursday? So, well, one uh, STBT to my mind is uh, Indian Hotel. Uh, it is showing some sign of uh, exhaustion. So, I would say 588 acts as a stop loss and 572 is my uh, target. And uh, the other stock that I would consider buying is Siemens right now. Uh, mm -hmm. 5541, good uptrend, ready for um, momentum. Uh, stop loss would be, uh, well, it is 5543. Stop loss is uh, 5480. Uh, Target would be uh, 5650. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's no let up on Excite Industries. Uh, I think uh, the report that came uh, over the weekend had a price target of 478. We are just there, 470 for you. In the last, uh, uh, I think, uh, five or seven minutes, the counters moved from 449 to 470, and another block deal of 20 crore rupees has happened at uh, about 4.37 lakh shares. Uh, let's look at what is the total volume on Excide. Uh, so far, uh, what we have here is, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today on X side, the counters up about 14% uh, and uh, the volume uh, is uh, uh, about 20. Uh, now, of course, it's 3,135 crore rupees and uh, rising by every tick that we see. Needless to say, this is a record high. And uh, of course, this is the sixth day that the counter has rallied uh, Let's look at the market watch, uh, the index heavyweights. It will give you an idea uh, what's going to happen on Thursday. Remember, tomorrow is a holiday. Uh, Hindustan Unilever, 1% higher. The Nifty FMCG index is also uh, at its days high. Remember, it's the good monsoon prediction uh, that is enthusing a lot of FMCG players. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, HDFC Bank, a percent higher, 1508. Reliance. Uh, Third of a percent higher, 29.37. ITC in the green, 4.26. Uh, amongst the top losers, it's uh, Infosys and uh, Bajaj FinServe, respectively 3.6 and 2.3 percent lower. Sakshi. All right. Uh, let me mark a few stocks from uh, the small cap basket that are ticking higher. Uh, Tejas Networks, that's up by 3 percent odd, uh, uh, you know, in trade. Uh, GSPL, uh, that's also up. Gujarat Safe Petronet. Nippon Life uh, India Asset, that's up by 2.7 percent odd. CAMS is moving higher by about 2 percent. Chumbal Fertilizers and Chemicals is up, uh, again about 2 percent higher in trade. RT Industries, that's also ticking higher in trade by about uh, 2 or percent. Um, the chemical space had started to move a bit, uh, Vaishali. Uh, would you look at this move incrementally now? Oh, yes. I mean, I think they are all very uh, fairly priced. So, well, to start with, uh, we have already recommended RT Industries. Uh, the other one we are liking is Deepak Nitride. In the cash category, we do like uh, Vishnu Chemicals, uh, Tatva Chintan. So, all these stocks are on our radar and we also like Balaji and uh, Alkyl Mines. So, these are the stocks which we have already uh, cherry-picked and recommended to our clients. Okay, fair enough. Okay, do tell us, Vaishali, then, last word from you on the show. Uh, how does one really prepare uh, for the next day's trade, which will be uh, the expiry as well? And uh, how would you really advise on both the Nifty and the Nifty Bank for investors and traders to move? 
So, well, I would not uh, suggest to, to carry uh, forward the positions, but yes, uh, for now, 22,100 acts as the support. And if this is respected, I would expect a bounce coming towards 22,350. And as far as Bank Nifty is concerned, the near term support lies ah. at 7,300. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just marked the option trade that we had uh, found out for you. 22,200 Nifty option call expiring April uh, 25th is uh, now at its day's high. Uh, I think still two minutes left. You'll see 22,200 and therefore this option call will also jump. Uh, Vaishali had mentioned that she hopes to see 22,200 uh, in the last 15, 17 minutes of trade. We still have two minutes left, but uh, like I said, that's how you trap options. HDFC Bank days high 1511. Uh, Reliance has started contributing uh, towards the uptick. Uh, let us see what happens in the last one or two minutes. Remember, we had caught that option uh, somewhere like at 155 rupees. If we can please show that call option, that will be wonderful. I am talking about uh, 22,200 Nifty April call expiring uh, on uh, 25th of uh, April. Let's see whether we can get that on screen or not. Okay. 180.45 that's it ladies and gentlemen sakshi uh, the wrap up is with you the nifty exactly 100 points lower 22 170 the bank nifty 200 points lower 47.580 the it index has taken it on the chin 900 points lower 33.593 for you and the nifty 500 uh, uh, flat as flat can be 20,441 absolutely and the good part is that the nifty is back above um, 22150 odd levels uh, towards the end of the show Vaishali, many thanks for being with us on the show and discussing such a wonderful stock ideas uh, hope you have a great uh, ram naomi and uh, we will meet uh, very very soon back on air um, till that time hope you have a very uh, fantastic time ahead let's quickly look at the other factors in the market the top movers uh, towards the closing of the trade Aisha Motors, 3% higher, HUL, 1.7% up, especially moved up in the last 15 minutes odd in trade. ONGC, 1.5% higher, Titan, HDFC Bank, Divis Laboratories as the top movers on the nifty in trade. However, on the downside, you did see stocks like uh, Infosys, uh, you know, definitely putting that lid uh, on the recovery as far as the markets are concerned, 3.6% lower in trade. LTI Mine Tree, down by about 3%. Indusin Bank, Bajaj Finserv, Wipro, HCL Tech, the top losers on the Nifty pack. Among the FNO movers, Excite uh, Batteries, uh, that was up 11%, uh, closing at a day's high point at 454. Uh, Z Entertainment Enterprises, 4% higher in trade at uh, 149 odd levels. Sambardhan Madarsan, again 4% up move for this one. Aisha Motors, India Cements, Loris Labs, and uh, were some of the other movers as far as the FNO action is concerned. Sectorally speaking, uh, the small caps did recover smartly, 0.8% up in trade. Oil and gas, media, FMCG, consumer durables, healthcare index, and slight gains on the auto index did manage to give us uh, some kind of a move. But towards uh, the laggard front, it was the IT index that was down and about. PSU banks, realty space, um, and the metal space also big laggard at this point in time. With that, ladies and gentlemen, many thanks for uh, being with us on Business Today television. We'll wrap it up at that, but do stay tuned on to Business Today as uh, the coverage from the world of business and finance continues on the other side for you. saw the signs early on, back in 2015, prioritizing renewal 